No, yeah. Okay, no, mine great. says live. Mine says live. Good. We are here with live. Tony Hale. You're live. Live with Tony Hale, uh, who won last year the Emmy for Best Supporting Actor. Nice. Uh, Modern Family had won it the three years before you. You broke sort of their run. Uh, just walk us through what was that like to have your name called out? Um, that, I can say, that was probably next to getting married and having my child. That was one of the most exciting nights of my life. And also just, oh, man. You know, anytime someone would come up to me that night and say, oh, my gosh, this is so exciting, I was able to, I was able to match it. I'd be like, I know. It's crazy. I was just, yeah. like, walking on this cloud and... It was nuts, and when they heard when I heard my name, I remember my wife was obviously sitting next to me, and I had I had to look at her face, and seeing her face is what made me realize they actually called my name, and then I'm surprised I could even put a sentence together because I was, it was crazy, crazy awesome. It was your first nomination too. Yeah, but that yeah, and that's the best thing. That alone, I'm, that morning when I found out that. Um, I got the nomination. My wife and I just we screamed for a good, good twenty minutes, and that to even be on that list. And I genuinely mean this. This isn't just kind of you know whatever, but it's I gen even to be on that list was an, an I, I was floored by that, and that was super exciting. Um, so I mean, obviously to actually get it, I think I I, I just my brain exploded. Yeah, and I can imagine with the nominations, because when you look at that supporting actor in a comedy ballot, there are so many names, like, oh, yeah. to, to get all singled those, out from that, like, you know. Yeah, and all those Modern Family guys, you know, crazy talented, Bill Hader, I mean, mm -hmm. that guy, what he brought on Saturday Night Live was unbelievable, um, Adam Driver, I mean, all these guys, so I was in pretty awesome company. Not to mention the people on your own shows, like Arrested Development and Veep, probably take up about fifteen slots on the on the ballot. <laughs> yeah, I've been very, very, um, and that's uh, that's another thing is, you know, Arrested and Veep happened in the same year, um, and as an actor, I'm I'm mostly th thankful just to be working. I mean, the fact that I getting gigs is a complete gift from God. I don't, it's it's just, I'm so thankful for that. And to be on two shows that I'm actually a fan of, that mm -hmm. blows my mind. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm Rudy, I love Arrested and Veep, so to, and them coming on the same year, it was just a pretty chaotic year. And mm. oh, oh, yeah, for sure. Now, um, so it was a big night for you winning that Emmy. Mm -hmm. um, and w w when you gave your acceptance speech, you um you you obviously you thanked your wife, your child, you went, but you, at the end you thanked uh, the Young Actors Theatre in uh yes. Tallahassee, Florida. Like that obviously yeah. meant a lot to you to sort of um talk mention them at the very end. Like how helpful was that for you as an actor? That was um that was one of those things that this theater company that I uh, grew up in in Tallahassee, Florida, named Young Actors Theater, was a massive part of my life. Um, I was not a kid who um, was very interested in sports. I was a little bit of a spaz kid, um, and my parents signed me up for this theater, and it was just a place where I not only could discover my personality, but discover what I loved to do. Um, it was a place where you could freely kind of ex just have fun and be stupid and um, it was a safe space and so it was one of those things I, I, if, to be able to recognize that even though the Emmy was mind-blowing to be able to nationally recognize a theater that made that much of a difference in my life that was as exciting for me that was definitely as exciting because they and the thing about the arts and schools is even if a kid, I mean, I grew up to go into the business, but even if a kid doesn't go into the business and, you know, does something else wonderful, like whatever, a lawyer, dentist, a lot of kids need that environment. They need that creative environment to discover who they are. And it's hugely important um, in, the school, in the education system. Mm, and, um, you know, drama, drama is a great way to sort of express yourself and learn perspective and things, even if it's not about performance. So, yeah, yeah. And it was, and just be stupid, and um, just be together with other friends, putting on shows, and the you know the drama of the theater company. I just remember there was so much drama, but it was fun, and 
I mean, I'm very incredibly thankful for that for that theater company. Hmm. Oh, that's cool. Um, now it was also a big night for Julia Louis Dreyfus, who's uh, two for two uh, mm. for the Emmys, uh, winning again. Um, and and the the great thing was, and the really maybe the highlight of Emmy night was when she won, because mm. you came up on stage with her, did a whole comedy bit. Even Anna Klumsky was in on it on her uh, oh, yeah. iPhone. Yeah. Um, how did that all come together? That idea. Um, that okay. So that morning. She called me, at the morning of the Emmy, she called me and she said, hey, I'm thinking if I were to win, I want, because my character on the show, you know, carries her bag around. And, um, and she said, if I win, then I want you to carry my clutch purse <laughs> on stage with me. And, of course, I was like, yeah, totally I'll do that. Um, and then I was like, that's hilarious. But then I got off the phone and I was like, oh, crap, what if she does, <laughs> what if she does win? i got to follow through. Um, and you, then all the insecurity comes in of like, oh my god, this could bomb and all that stuff. Um, but thankfully, when we got on stage together, it was just, when you're working with her, who you just trust anything that she does and you feel just comfortable and fun, um, it, was, it was fun to do that together. That was, a, that was, and just, you know, it was, because I haven't done theater in so long, because before I booked Arrested Development, I did theater in New York. And it was fun being on stage and doing a live bit and, you know, I don't know, it was really, really exciting and fun. And it was, uh, it would have been good to, uh, with, um, you, you, like, probably also had in your head, oh, I've just won an Emmy, like, that whole night was sort of such yeah. a mad, mad Oh, man. Night. Dude. Yeah. yeah, that's, because that had just happened. Hmm. And um, so I, I mean, I... I'm, again, I'm, I'm surprised that even worked because I was just at, completely out of my body. Hmm. Yeah, so that 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 was great. Um, and um, I get and I from from memory serves if I remember correctly, you guys are uh, because of the Emmys, you had to film sort of the episode Clovis around then, which sort of helped dictate sort of being in Silicon Valley. Um, for that sort of around. Oh yeah. Time. yeah. Wait, so, say that. Oh wait. Oh oh, you mean we we shot the um, Silicon Valley episode around the Emmys? Yes. 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 Yeah, um, and that was a big episode for you. <laughs> this is where my memory is that, off. I'm trying to think <laughs> what, what I did in it. All I remember from that episode is, I mean, I do remember some things, but uh, the main thing I remember is <laughs> Matt Walsh sitting on that big ball on the floor, and then him <laughs> saying he's holding, <laughs> he's holding a cup of jelly beans or something. And he goes, nice, nice job, Gary, because I screwed up again. And then me just hitting him on his shoulder, <laughs> just flying off the ball. And oh man, that was fun. I remember that. Um, I'm trying to think of what else from that episode. She gets oh. hit with a ping pong ball, and oh, you yeah. lose it a bit. That's right. That's right. And Gary lost it because nobody messes with his woman. And also, they just weren't pay they weren't giving her the respect she deserves. Because in Gary's world, she's pretty much, you know, she's a princess. She should be, she should be like next to Queen Elizabeth. She's everything. So when some like you know, douchebags are playing ping pong behind her and she not even giving her the respect she deserves, and then a ping pong hit her, uh uh, it was over. That's when that's when Braveheart came out. Braveheart, Gary. Hmm. And that episode, you also um, there was um uh, um. People were wondering uh, why a guy was uh, coming out of your hotel room, and it was oh, that's right. Because <laughs> Gary, uh, I apologize, my memory is awful. I love that you keep reminding me. It's fun to remember. <laughs> um, I because um, Gary's shoulder was hurting, so he had to hire a masseuse to come to his room. But they didn't know that, and this guy came out of this room, and they all they were all already questioning. You know, I don't know is is Gary gay? Is he not gay? And then when they saw um, the guy come out of his my room, and I said, I said, and then they approached me with it, and I was like, you know, he was just doing, he was just giving me a massage, and they're like, okay, you do, you do what you want to do, you just, yeah. okay, that's fine, we're not judging you, and I'm like, no, he was giving me a massage, no, nope, it's okay, you do what you want to do, so Gary yeah. can never win. Uh, do, um, you you were talking about how like. Uh, you know, Selena's Gary's princess. Like, you know, she's so. Many. Do you reckon he's learnt anything about her over the past three seasons of Veep? 
Um, I he is so disillusioned. Um, it's a very uh, abusive relationship, but I think he is. Uh, Gary has this bounce back ability that is phenomenal. Like you know, she beats him down and abuses him verbally all the time, but it's as though once it's said, it just goes out his other ear, and he doesn't even register it. He just goes back to worshiping her and doing whatever she needs. So he doesn't retain a lot of stuff she says. I think he's just completely has, I wouldn't even say rose-colored glasses, he just has blinders on. It just does not see or hear anything that she actually does. So even if she has gotten worse, I don't think he, he, he has such an image in his head that they will probably one day be married, and that's all he wants. <laughs> and so he's got his eye on the goal. He's got his eye on the prize. So anything she does, she's, he's like, well, all right, we're getting married one day. So so I think she's probably gotten a lot worse, but he doesn't phase him. Hmm. It's almost like she, like, like he completely needs her. He's become completely reliant on her. But he, in his head, it's probably, and tell me if this is true or not, but in his head, does he think she's completely reliant on him to the same degree? Like they, they sort of need each other? Oh, yeah. In Gary's world... She really needs him. I mean, yeah. she really needs him, and she needs... She can't live life without him. In her world, I don't even think she knows Gary's last name. Yeah. I don't think she could even... I don't even think she could recall where he's from, anything personal about him. But in Gary's world, she just, like, completely is dependent on him and knows everything mm. about his life. Hmm. And he, uh, he's... What do you think with this ensemble? Because like, it is a real ensemble show, uh, Veep, and everyone's got such a different personality. What do you think he brings to the table in, in the ensemble? You know, what does Gary bring to the table? Um, I would say, I, it, you know, DC is, uh, DC like anything, because the fact is, DC is very much like high school. It's like the closest you, the closer you get to the popular kid, the more powerful you feel. So the closer you get to Obama, the more powerful people feel. And everybody's kind of out to get ahead and positioning themselves and manipulating and backstabbing. And I think Gary's one of those guys that, you know, he's been in this position for 15, you know, to how many ever years. And he is very, he's fine being just by her side. He's not really trying to get ahead. He just wants, he wants her to get ahead. Hmm. But he's pretty, uh... He's just kind of really, he kind of half glass full, tries to be content, um positive, where everybody else is really manipulative. So I think he's just kind of this wide-eyed, all is good kind of guy. You know, I mean, granted, he's incredibly codependent, <laughs> and he needs like a 24-hour therapist. But um, I think he's just kind of brings to the table like, why are we acting like this? She's wonderful. You know, just kind of this stupidity to the table. I don't know. He's also got this real honesty to him that maybe the others don't have as much, where I, I, I loved in the debate episode, she goes, is the twitching real bad? And he just looked at her and went, yes. Yeah. Oh, he's not yes. going to lie to her. He's not going to lie to her. Absolutely. It's like when she ran into the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. I don't, can I have a mirror? No, yeah. I'm not going to give you a mirror. You're not going to see your face. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Or she goes, she goes, do you have a mirror? And Gary goes, no. And she goes, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, um, and the, the Veep is a very collaborative uh, process from what I, I understand, where you spend a couple weeks working the scenes together before shooting and things like that. What's it like being a part of that sort of process as an actor that might be a bit different to other sort of shows and things? Yeah, you, um, it's awesome. And it, many reasons, one being that um, obviously in theater you get a lot of rehearsal time. You get a lot of time to kind of work through the material. In television you typically don't get rehearsal time. You kind of jump in and just start doing it. To be able to have two or three weeks where we take these this material that the writers have worked on very, very hard and we can just, just find the chemistry in it. We can see what gels. We can see what bits work. Um, they give us the opportunity to kind of come up with fun stuff, and then they go off and hone it. Um, I mean, that alone is a gift to an actor. Um, they kind of, they just, and Amanda Yanucci, 
he really you we all know the vision he wants for the show and kind of what his style and is but and he gives the parameters for the show but then he it's like a playground he sets up the playground but then he allows us to kind of play in there um, and that's all an actor can ask for you know it's there it's it's an ego free environment it's very collaborative Julie is obviously a huge team player so I mean it's a, it's a gig that I am really really grateful for hmm. And I guess um, with um, this season, seen a big change in Veep. Obviously, it's running for uh, office rather than looking at mm -hmm. the, machi the machinations of the Veep. By the way, office. in Gary's world, she should—I mean, she should have been running for the office from day one. Yeah. Like, I mean, like people just need to wake up. Yeah, for sure. Do you think uh, Gary has uh, grown up his whole life uh, dreaming of being the the body man for the president of the United States? Um, I don't know. I honestly don't know if he even knew. I mean, as a kid, I don't. I think he uh, he was one of those kids who really never really knew what he wanted to do. Never really had an identity. Just kind of I don't know. I don't know. And then he met someone powerful, and he was like, Ah, I like that identity. I'm going to attach myself to her identity, and then I'm not. Gonna, I'm still not going to have an identity. My identity is going to be her identity. <laughs> Um, and then he kind of still kept going. So I don't know if he had a dream of kind of being, you know, a body man, but, you know, he'll take it because he likes the stuff that comes with it. I mean, she's involved. Um, so, I mean, the sad thing is whatever happens in Selena's future, um, whatever happens, in Gary's world, he's like, oh, I mean, you're going to, I mean, say one day she does whatever and starts to work at, you know, clothing store or something. Gary, in Gary's world, it's like, yeah, I'm coming along. In her world, she's like, I don't know who you are. <laughs> I'm moving on. <laughs> yeah. do, um, do you, what, what's the hardest part about playing Gary? The hardest part about playing Gary, um, you know what's the hardest part? Is not being able to... Um, he, he hasn't been given a lot of opportunities to fight back. And some of the stuff Dan says, um, or Jonah or stuff, his, he kind of keeps his mouth shut um, and kind of steams, and he just gets resentful and just gets angry. But, man, I want that day to come where he just explodes. He got to explode on those ping pong players a little bit. But I want him to just, ex just go nuts on Dan or Jonah or, or Amy, just lose it. And that day's coming. Let me tell you right now. That day is coming. And it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> do we, um, do, do we, um, uh, I guess uh, what I wanted to ask was, um, do you, if you get nominated for an Emmy again, um, mm -hmm. for, for this, uh, for this current season, is there an episode you have in mind that you think would be a good submission? Um, last yeah. year you submitted Running, that paid off very yeah. well. Um, which is if the same I, episode Julia submitted. Oh, that's right. Yeah. If I if I did, um, which would be crazy, <laughs> again, um, I would probably submit this episode that's coming up uh, this Sunday. Okay, the, uh, and you might be able to submit like because it's a double episode. So. Oh yeah, that's right. It is. Um, I would probably. I've only seen parts. But I would probably submit the the ninth episode before the last episode. Hmm. You might be able to submit both. Oh really? That's, that's what Amy Poehler did last year on uh, Parks when they had a two air back to back. So. Oh nice. Um, um yeah. I don't know, but it, that's kind of what's fun. Um, I when I I haven't seen the whole thing, so I'm really excited to yeah. um, see how it comes together. Yeah, and sometimes you might not want too long a tape for people to have to sit through. If all your good stuff's in the first half, maybe it's better to submit just that. So, but um, things that things to consider for when you get yeah, I know. I don't, I'll that, nominate, knock on. Yeah, I don't know that. Yeah, that's just that still blows my mind. But um, uh, I don't know. I have to. I'll have to kind of figure it through. You got some time. You got some time. <laughs> uh, with, We've had a few questions. Uh, we've had a few questions come in, so we might try to sort of lightning round through. Yeah, let's do it. Someone sent in um, uh, Vin. I recently watched uh, an episode of Hollywood Game Night that you were on. What was oh, that yeah. like? Really fun. Um, thank you, Ben, for asking the question. 
Um, I was there with Bradley Whitford, Malin Ackerman, Adam Devine, um, Arsenio Hall, which was fun, and then Nate Burkus. And so it's cool. These people that you're typically not hanging out with, just because you know you do different work, just kind of getting together and playing games. And Jane Lynch, obviously. And it was really fun. I will say the first half of the game I really sucked, but once I got into that game where you kind of had the cards on each other's foreheads and you could scream out clues, then I got my groove. Then I got into the groove, and it was really, really fun. Hmm. Tallison asks, which of your Arrested Development co-stars would best fit in on Veep? Oh, which of, oh, uh, which Arrested Development co-star would best fit on Veep? Um, oh, man, I'd love to see them all on Veep. Um, but um, there's something about, uh, I think Jeffrey Tambor could come on and just play a really intense, um, just uh, dry senator that just cremates everybody. Yeah, I, I can see that. I can definitely see that. Um, Chris asked about, uh, you're, you're also a guest star this year for the show about a boy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, you know, you, you could get an Emmy nomination for that too in the guest category. What was it like being in About a Boy? What was it like being in About a Boy? Um, really fun. Um, they the the uh, they called me while I was doing Veep and asked me if it would be something I'd be interested in, and they said, um, you know, the character is the boy's biological father, and he's not really have it doesn't have really really relationship with him, and then they said, and he raises penguins <laughs> in the Antarctica, and I was like, I'm in. You got me. I'm in. Of course, down the road, I find out that he's he's pretty much naked in half the episode, and I was like, ooh, I should have worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done some P90X. <laughs> um, Beth, Matthew Jenner has asked, uh, you, you've had two of the most iconic supporting roles in comedy the past decade, Buster Bullion nice. and Gary Walsh. And, and look, look, it's too, like, you know, Arrested Development and Beat, such a... Uh, Sort of iconic. Arrested Development definitely iconic. I guess Veep's still going, but um, definitely very high quality. Uh, what attracted you to these roles? And has there ever been a role that you've declined that you wish you hadn't? Oh, good question. What attracted me to the roles? Um, to be completely honest, I when I was when I got Arrested Development, that was my very first job. So I was, you know, I was so thankful to have it. I mean, I'm still so thankful to have a job. I mean, I. I, 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 as an actor, just to be working is is a huge, huge gift. Um, when Aviv came around, I obviously Armando Iannucci. I was a huge fan of from the thick of it. Um, but also, you combine that with Julia Louis Dreyfus playing the vice president, and also Armando's style. Um, it was just kind of a dream team. So, you know, I was really, really, really wanting to do that. Um, is there a job that I did not take that I wish I'd taken? Um, Gosh, I can't, <laughs> I can't think of a lot of jobs that I've not taken um, if I was offered them. Um, uh, well, that's a good question. I can't, I, I can't think of it. If, if I think about it, I'll come back to that. Hmm. The, thing, the thing I think is really fun about Veep is the little... Um, sometimes the little moments are the funniest moments, not the big mm -hmm. sort of... Like, I remember that Clovis episode, how you're all like... Like, you have to pretend to have a conversation with Selena, and I can't remember if it's your character or someone oh, else. Oh, yeah. Just, like, just whispers, like, museums should be larger. Like, yeah. <laughs> or should, or like should be smaller. Or something. And I said, yeah. the, the museums are really, really big. They need to be smaller. Yeah. Yeah. And then she walks, she walks away and she goes, okay, we got it. Those numbers are good. That's good. Okay, we're, we're yeah. good. Like, I think that might be my favorite moment of that episode. <laughs> like, you, you know, like... I also loved how... Um, the guy, um, uh, he, there, there's a character in there called Craig, who is the head of the internet company, and we, we were, were told that we had to pronounce his name, Craig, <laughs> Craig, Craig, and they're like, I was like, is Craig here? No, it's Craig. And it's like, all right, stop your pretentious, you know, Silicon Valley crap. Yeah. Mm. Um, do you, uh, from awards seal, if a Selena ever became president, would the show's name change? Ooh, good question. Um, I don't know, man. Um, oh wow, uh, that's a great question. I don't know. Yeah, I, I haven't even thought. Of, I don't know. I don't know. That's that's when the, I guess if that were to happen, that that's when the bigwigs, the gods, have to decide that. There's something. Yeah, what, what's what's so funny though is there's something about the title Veep, 
is just that second in command in the shadow. It wouldn't have the same. I guess. I guess you could. It wouldn't have the same sadness to change the name. I guess. I don't know. Good question, though. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is, that's what all our eyes are on, what's going to happen if the show becomes about the president. <laughs> right. like what, yeah, it would be a real gear change, but um, you know, I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if that's where it went. It wouldn't surprise me if it stayed the same either. Mm. Mm. Um, we got, we got one more question. Oh, I cut, yeah. Two more questions, sorry. Uh, one is, uh, why do you like gifting sweets? Oh... Oh, why do I like gifting sweets? Uh, okay, gifting sweet is sometimes during award seasons they kind of have these people have different products and they bring actors in just to kind of introduce them to the products and stuff. And this is so. Um, I'm a real gift giver. I like to give gifts, and some people say that you kind of find out what your love language is, and and it could be either kind of. I don't know, like words or affection or gift giving. In my, I like to give gifts to show love. So when I go to these gifting suites and they're just like letting me hold, you know, have these products and stuff, it's just like you just feel really loved. <laughs> no, but it's just like it's fun. It's just fun. It, and I also, I just got back from a a cruise. My wife and daughter and I went on the Disney cruise, which is really fun. And. Um, you kind of pay up front, and then you get on the cruise, and you don't pay for anything, so it feels free. And when something feels free, it's just like, ah, oh, it's just funner, you know. So I'm kind of a maniac. What's the best? What's the best thing you've ever gotten to get things sweet? Mm. I mean, Karen, it doesn't take much for me. If they hand me a candy bar, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Can I have two? Yeah. Um, what is the best thing I've ever gotten? Hmm. Oh my gosh, this is where my memory is just crap. Uh, I think some, I mean, there. one time we got, there's this company, um, oh shoot, I forgot the name of them, but they're little applesauce, <laughs> I can't believe I'm talking about this. They're these little applesauce uh, pouches, and uh, they're good snacks. <laughs> I'm going to stop talking because I sound like a complete idiot. Get rid, get rid of all the all the fancy colognes and stuff. It's the little apple sauce that. Is the just really good snacks. <laughs> yeah. That's, that, the that, that, That's sad. It's food related always. Yeah. What do, if you love you love giving gifts? What what's your go to gift for people? When you? What's a go to gift? That's a great question. Um, I you know what I love to do because I think it's it's if I find a really like if someone's birthday or I. A couple things. I love to give pictures that are framed because that's something I like just having in your house. And for Christmas, every summer, my family does, um, we do a vacation and I always kind of videotape it and with my little you know, uh, phone and stuff. And then as a gift for Christmas, I love going to iMovie and editing together the movie and adding music and transitions. And then that's a really fun gift to give them because that's a memory. You know, it's something that they'll have for the rest of their life. So that's really fun. Yeah, my my go-to gift's usually just some hardcover book that might have some nostalgia value, and then you can write something in it. Yeah, Cause exactly. People always, yeah, because people always throw out the card. Yeah, exactly, and and having like a personal message in it is important. Obviously, you're a big reader. Are you a big reader? Yeah, I guess like I'd like to read more than I do, but I, I like the fact to read. That you're giving a book though that shows that you've invested in the book, and then you want to share that book, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, good. Yeah. I'm not, I, I need to. I need to be a much better, much better reader. So that says a lot about you. Oh, that, thank you. I I, I feel like I the, I've got friends that do a lot more reading than me. I get excited about applesauce pouches and candy bars. <laughs> you, usually they're like picture books, like you. Should... Oh, okay. Okay, well, no, no, the, I mean, hey, if I, actually, I actually have a children's book coming out in August that you'll really, you might really, really? like your, to give okay. your. It talks about how um, we're always looking as you know we're always finding ourselves looking to the next big thing. It's called Archibald's next big thing, and then in the end he realizes that big and beautiful things are all around him. And we, as my friend says, we have to wake ourselves up a hundred times a day to where we are, and that's what the book's about. I like it. Well, so it might yeah, be a great. fun book for you to give your, your, your nephews and nieces if you have any, or kids. Yeah, I, 
I give uh, I don't have kids, I don't have nephews, I don't have nieces, but I do have some friends that are Arrested Development and Beat fans, so they might get a kick Great. out of a Great. a kick out of uh, getting a picture a book written by you. Um, so uh, that sweets question uh, came courtesy of uh, what's uh, Matt Walsh uh, sent in that question for us. Oh, the gifting sweets? No, oh, thanks, yeah. Matt. Good lord, so, he's calling me out constantly. Yeah, he says he likes asking you that. <laughs> yeah, he's just like shaming me. That's his favorite extracurricular activity. He he also wanted to know, and that's our last question. Uh, have you ever worked with Pamela Anderson? It was. <laughs> Oh, I have, Matthew. Matthew knows I have. I did an episode of Wow. Oh, why didn't I? Why didn't I get questions to him when he was doing his? Um, yeah, he got uh, him first. He got uh, in the table for you. There was a show called Stacked. I don't know if you remember on Fox. Oh yeah, yes. I do. I do remember the ads for that. And, and Pamela Anderson, who by the way is lovely, and she's a very sweet girl. Um, she was the head of this bookstore, and I guest starred once and came in as like a really uptight customer um, in the bookstore, and the show was called Stacked. Yes, thank you, Matt Walsh. Yeah, there you go. I'm sure you wanted people to remember all your work, not just me, but the rest of the development. But... Exactly, guys. I've got a wide range. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for all your time thank with you. us today, Tony. Uh, it was so much fun talking with you, and all the best. Oh, and, and all the West with Beat is Arrested Development coming back? That's like seems like an obligatory question I have to no. ask you. But no, I I, pre I appreciate you asking because I love I love that question. I I always feel bad that I don't have enough information. I know that if it were if they were to make the decision for it to come back, every single one of us would be would be, would jump on board because. Yeah. That the thing about that show, in addition to V, but, but the thing about Arrested Development that was so exciting is there were so many surprises about the writing. You never knew where the writing was going to go, and it was just like you jumped in and you're like, "All right, let's see what happens. Let's see where they go." And that's really, really fun. Yeah. So um, yeah. So um, so all the best if that ever comes back. Uh, but all the best for Veep and the Emmys this year. Let's make it two for two, like Julia. Uh, we'll see. Um, yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, thanks so much for your time, Tony. Thanks, man. I appreciate you taking the time. No, no worries at all. All right, I will talk to you later.